Republican Congressman uh, Ron DeSantis joining us right now. Congressman, I hate to hit your broadside on this the news development here, but what do you make of this? It was in your neck of the woods at Key West where they were planning this in Florida. Um, you've reminded me many times on this show and others that uh, we've got to be vigilant on this. We were here, uh, but this looks like a close call. No, absolutely, Neil. And, and the problem that we're having is that ISIS, with their propaganda network, you know, they're inspiring people like this individual to commit these acts of jihad or attempt to do it. And so as long as ISIS is achieving victories and they're able to paint a romantic vision of the jihad, I think it's going to be, there's going to be a certain segment of the population you know, that's going to respond to that. Um, but this is also nothing new in Florida. You know, the first suicide bomber over in Syria was from South Florida who had gone over and actually trained over there, You're right came back that. for a time, and then went back and conducted the attack. And the FBI or the State Department, they never interdicted him or even knew what he was up to. Um, and so I think the vulnerabilities are plain. You know, this always comes up about who's financing him, who's helping him. Iran's name comes up a lot. Uh, but the focus for now seems to be secure this deal with Iran. It's the best thing on the table. I know you were among those. Talking to John Kerry today, Secretary of State, who was arguing that it's, a, it's unrealistic. And, and if you think there's an alternative to this, it's a unicorn fantasy. I think those are his words. But do you think that uh, the administration will get its way on that this deal will go through despite the majority of Congress's opposition, there's, there's not a veto-proof majority there to override what the president would do? Well, there's definitely not a majority who would affirmatively vote to approve. You're right about that. I think there's a chance that you could have a veto override. And the reason is the more we learn about the deal, a lot of the details are worse than what I think a lot of the Democrats anticipated just a month or two ago. I mean, we know about the $140 billion Iran's going to get. We know they get to keep their nuclear infrastructure. We know the inspections are weak. Now we also know that there are side deals negotiated between the IAEA and Iran about the Parchin military site and the past military military uses. And that is something that Congress is not being given access to. So I think just as a practical matter, if you look at it more like a liberal Democrat would, do you honestly feel comfortable voting for this agreement when a key portion of it is something that you're not going to be able to review? What did you think of the president's posture, to, you know, at a press conference in Ethiopia yesterday saying uh, no, no one can present a factual argument? I'm paraphrasing here, Congressman against this deal. And I'm thinking to myself, and I don't know nearly as much about this as you do, that the fact is that any in weapons inspectors there or nuclear inspectors cannot be American. That's a fact. That does worry me. We know for a fact that we just can't just barge in on the Iranians at any given moment. We have to give a heads up. That allows time to hide stuff. And we know for a fact that a lot of the sanctions would evaporate as soon as uh, this deal ensues. So there's very little incentive uh, for them getting at least substantial amounts of monies up front. Those are facts. And yet Absolutely. the position of opposing this or raising questions about it seems to be taken as lunacy. What do you make of that? Well, I think he loses credibility to the American people. I mean, it's everything you laid out. Then they get to keep their intercontinental ballistic missile program. The arms embargo is going to go away. And, oh, by the way, Iran is going to become the dominant power in the Middle East, that's ultimately going to be bad for a fight against ISIS, because guess what, Neil? These Sunni Arabs in places like Al Anbar province in Iraq, where I served back in 2007, if they see Iran as the dominant power, a Shiite country, they're going to be much more likely to want to join ISIS. And so I think we're unwittingly also fueling more people to join the ranks of the premier Sunni terrorist group, ISIS. And so there are so many things that are problematic with it. And to not even engage in debate, you know, I think is a sign of weakness. And that is one reason why I think there is the chance to override the veto. I'm not going to predict that because I know the Democrats like to vote with the president. Um, but it's very difficult to justify voting for this when you start really getting down in the weeds. You know, there was an exchange with the, the Secretary Kerry and, and uh, Congressman Scott Perry on, on, on this particular deal and, and essentially who was hurting whom. I, I know you've heard this, but I want to get your quick reaction to it. Yeah, I mean, more look, about I, I, this deal or the U.N.'s approval or American sovereignty and the approval of the American people through their duly elected representatives, Mr. Secretary. Congressman, I don't need any lessons from you about who I represent. I've represented and fought for our country since I was out of college. And God so, bless you for your so service. Don't give me sir. any lessons about that, okay?
Yeah, that was a pretty intense exchange. By the way, Congressman Perry will be joining me on Fox Business tomorrow, coast to coast at noon Eastern time. But what did you think of that, that the, the, the secretary tried to turn this around about, I know what, what I'm doing is for the good of the country, and any opposition to it or any alternative is just a, a unicorn fantasy. What did you make of that? You know, I was very unimpressed by that. The fact of the matter is they d chose not to submit it as a treaty, and then they said, okay, we're going to do this Iran Nuclear Review Act, and they're not even really abiding by that because they're preempting that by going to the United Nations with it. And then by not producing all the documents that the IAEA has, they're not even complying with, with that framework. So it's basically they view the American people, I think, as an obstacle to getting this deal. And I think they've behaved, conducted themselves accordingly. So I respect Secretary Kerry's service, but come on, that doesn't give you the, the right to go around the American people. All right. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you.